Hello, my name is Glenn Hall. Today is May 15th, 2022. Today is the biblical day of second Passover. I've made several videos about this day. I also have uh, done quite a bit of teaching on it on my uh, website, which is uh, www.zedek.us. And um, I would encourage you to, to listen to some of those videos. I believe that we are we're at the end of this age. We are at the very end of this age. And I believe that uh, as early as next Sunday, one week from today, early in the morning, could be the biblical um, fulfillment of second first fruits. Jesus was the first of the first fruits. He was the first Passover lamb. He was the Passover lamb. And there is a hidden fulfillment of second Passover and second feast of first fruits, which is going to be the glorification of the sons of God. And we are at the time in history where that has to happen. Um, this age is over, we're at the end, and um, the Lord brought some scriptures out today in our little family um, Bible reading time with my wife and my son that I want to share. I have not spoken much in the last six months because the Lord has given me this word from Amos chapter 5, verses 10 through 13. They hate him who reproves in the gate, and they abhor him who speaks the truth. Therefore, because you trample on the poor, and you exact taxes of grain from him, you have built houses of hewn stone but you have not, but you shall not dwell in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink their wine. For I know how many are your transgressions and how great are your sins. You who afflict the righteous, who take a bribe and turn aside the needy in the gate. Therefore, he who is prudent will keep silent in such a time, for it is an evil time. We live in the most evil time in the history of man, barring perhaps the time right before the great flood of Noah, but I think this at least matches that time in pure evil that scourges the earth. I didn't think I was going to do this video either but I felt that I needed to. This morning began with um, my wife bringing up a verse, and I thought it was Matthew 24, the very last section of Matthew 24. It wasn't, but this spoke to my heart, and this is why I have to speak today. Matthew 24 is the preeminent chapter in the scripture where Jesus talks about the signs of the end time, the signs that will occur right before he returns again. It is as the days of Noah. In the days of Noah, they were genetically modifying everything on earth. The fallen angels, the corrupt angels, had come to earth and had committed intercourse with women and produced giants in the land. And the giants were destroying all of mankind. And they had corrupted all of mankind and also the animals of the earth. You read about, about that in the books of Enoch and the book of Jasher.
and I've talked somewhat about these things, but Matthew 24, verse 36 through 49, 51 says this, But concerning that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father only. For as were the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day when Noah entered the ark, and they were unaware until the flood came and swept them all away, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two men will be in the field, one will be taken and one left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken and one left. Therefore stay awake, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. Stay awake, now more than ever. But know this, that if the master of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Who then is the faithful and wise servant whom his master has set over his household to give them their food at the proper time? Who is that faithful and wise servant? What is the household? The household is the house of God. And what is the food? The food is the doctrine. The food is the truth of God. Blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Truly I say to you, he will set him over all his possessions. But if that wicked servant says to himself, my master is delayed. Oh, how delayed it seems to me that the Lord now is. And I do not want to be a wicked servant. But if that wicked servant says to himself, my master is delayed and begins to beat his fellow servants and eats and drinks with drunkards. This is speaking about spiritual drunkards. It's speaking about Isaiah 28, the drunkards of the house of Ephraim. The people who believe that they've got it all with respect to spiritual things. And they do not understand the times that they live in. But if that wicked servant says to himself, My master is delayed, and begins to beat his fellow servants and eats and drinks with drunkards, the master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him, and at an hour he does not know, and will cut him in pieces and put him with the hypocrites. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. There are many faithful, well, there are many Christians who believe they are faithful. That the Lord is going to say, you are a wicked servant. You did not understand the times that you live in. And you continued to play church as usual. And that wicked servant will be cut in pieces and placed with the hypocrites in the outer darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. I believe that there are many Christians who have already begun to partake of the outer darkness because they followed the way of the world with respect to the pandemic and its supposed remedy. And they have taken something into their bodies that has defiled their holy place, has defiled their soul. The abomination of desolation has come. And it's the form of that thing that everyone was saying you had to do in order to be safe, in order to travel, in order to do the things like you always did, in order for you to remain in Babylon, in order for you to remain in Egypt. 
And many people listened to that and they took that death into themselves. And since then they have suffered and some are suffering outer darkness even today, even now. I believe there can be repentance of that decision. You have to face the fact of what you've done, of not living by faith and in following the dictates of the world. Now let's go to Luke 21, which also speaks of this time. Luke 21, starting at verse 25 to the end of the chapter, there will be signs and sun and moon and stars. Today is second Passover and today is a full eclipse of the moon. A blood moon we will have today. There will be signs and sun and moon and stars and on the earth distress of nations in perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and the waves. The nations are perplexed. The sea, the people, all the people of the earth are roaring. The waves are foaming people fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. The powers of the heavens have been shaken. I watch them manipulate the weather daily where I live. We have lived this year in South Central Missouri with the greatest winds that I've ever witnessed in my life. We've seen extreme cold when we should have had warm spring weather. The powers of the heavens have been shaken, have been shaken. People are fainting with fear. I am practically fainting with fear. I'm still standing in faith, but it's not easy because I still don't see the hand of God changing anything. I, I am hoping that this is the year because I, I really don't see how men can continue past this year if the sons of God are not glorified this year. We need supernatural help. We are at the Red Sea. Our backs are against the sea and Pharaoh the king of this world is coming to kill us. Do you see that? Do you understand that? This is where we are today. It's not easy. It's not simple. And we're going to look at what happened to God's people in the past at this time. And Father, I pray that we will not react the same way. I pray you'll give us faith. You'll have grace for us, that you'll give us strength for this. And then, after this terrible time of fear, then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Okay, this, that's referring to Revelation chapter 19, when the Kodeshim, the sons of God, the glorified sons of God, returned to the earth in power and great glory. Now, when these things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. So, straighten up, raise your heads. Understand the time you live in and walk in faith now. And he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they come out in leaf, you see for yourselves and know that the summer is already near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all has taken place. This generation. I have seen the world change in my 66 year life. Things exist today 
that I never thought were possible. I have seen a reality that is so evil that it is beyond comprehension. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But watch yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life, and that day come upon you suddenly like a trap. Do you see the day coming? Let it not trap you. For it will come upon all who dwell on the face of the whole earth. But stay awake at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place and to stand before the Son of Man. Then it was at the end of our time today and the word that my wife remembered where she had read this scripture she wanted to talk about, and it's in Revelation chapter 16. I'm going to start in verse 10. We, I believe, are living right now through the fifth and sixth bowls of wrath. Chapter 16 is the bowls of wrath. And here in, in verse 10, the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast and its kingdom was plunged into darkness. People gnawed their tongues in anguish and cursed the God in heaven for their pain and their sores. But they did not repent of their deeds. Many people now have pains and sores caused by what they did based upon Lucifer's kingdom's advice. Verse 12, the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates and its water was dried up to prepare the way for the kings from the east. And I saw coming out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet three unclean spirits like frogs. The beast is the government. The beast speaks lies all the time and it speaks the same lies as the dragon Satan speaks. The false prophet is the false church, the false religion that always props up the beast of government and they all speak with a demonic spirit. For they are demonic spirits performing signs who go abroad to the kings of the whole world to assemble them for battle on the great day of God, the Almighty. We are at the time of this battle now. And then verse 15, pay attention. Behold, I am coming like a thief Blessed is the one who stays awake, keeping his garments on, that he may not go out about naked and be seen exposed. Keep your garments on. Stay awake. And they assemble them at the place, and in Hebrew is called Armageddon. What is Armageddon? Armageddon is the battle of the mind. Have you been battling in your mind? Have you been battling for the faith? Has your mind been assaulted by everything that's been coming upon the world? Do you see what's coming upon the world? Or are you still denying that we live at this time and think that we're going to get back to normal? There is no normal we're never going back to normal. We're never going back to Babylon, those of us who have faith in God. We don't want to go back. We don't want to go back to Egypt. We don't want to go back to Babylon. So what are our garments? Is it our own righteousness? Do I make my own garment? Do I... Prepare and keep my own garment. It's the garment of faith. 
It's the garment knowing that Jesus Christ is your covering, your atonement, that you have no righteousness in yourself, but that we stand before God because of his righteousness, not our own. And that we look to him to keep us even in this very, very dangerous time. That we don't look at the waves that are threatening to drown us. That we keep our eyes fixed upon Jesus, even in the midst of the chaos that we see, the threats that we see, the failing health that we see and that we may ourselves experience. We continue looking to Jesus in faith and that's how we keep our garments. Unfortunately, many Christians are like Israel of old. And we'll go to Psalm 106 now to just look at a few things dealing with them. 106 begins like this, and we need to be like this. Praise the Lord, O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Who can utter the mighty deeds of the Lord, the mighty deeds of I am, the mighty deeds of Yahuwah? Or declare all his praise. Blessed are they who observe justice, who do righteousness at all times. Remember me, O oh, I am, when you show favor to your people. Help me when you save them, that I may look upon the prosperity of your chosen ones, that I may rejoice in the gladness of your nation, that I may glory with your inheritance. But both we and our fathers have sinned. We have committed iniquity, we have done wickedness. Our fathers, when they were in Egypt, did not consider your wondrous works. They did not remember the abundance of your steadfast love, but rebelled by the sea at the Red Sea. That's at the very beginning. God delivered Israel from Egypt. And then Egypt followed them to the Red Sea. Let's look at that. Let's read what happened there. It's in Exodus 14. Now they had seen, remember, 10 mighty miracles of God that ended with the death of the firstborn. Just amazing miracles that Moses did, that God performed through Moses. And the people of Israel saw that, and all the people of Israel were spared by the Passover lamb. And then they fled Egypt, and they ended up at the Red Sea. And what happened? The Egyptians pursued them, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and his horsemen and his army, and overtook them and camped at the sea. Exodus 14, verse 10, When Pharaoh drew near, the people of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them, and they feared greatly. And the people of Israel cried out to I Am. They said to Moses, Is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us in bringing us out of Egypt? Is not this what we said to you in Egypt, Moses? Leave us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. Is that right? Would it be better for us to stay in Babylon? To listen to their advice? to take their drugs, to do their surgeries, so that we can continue to live in Babylon and then die in Babylon? Would it be better for us to die in Babylon? Or is it better for us to go into the wilderness 
where God himself prepares a place for us. Moses responded, verse 13, And Moses said to the people, Fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. I am will fight for you, and you have only to be silent. What is this? For us, the fulfillment of Revelation chapter 12. Verse 1, 1 through 6. And a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. This is the church, the faithful church. She was pregnant and was crying out in birth pains. And the agony of giving birth, this is the birthing of the sons of God. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and on his heads seven diadems. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth so that when she bore her child, he might devour it. She gave birth to a male child, one who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. But her child was caught up to God and to his throne. This is the glorification of the sons of God, the ones who are to rule the nations with a rod of iron. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared by God in which she is to be nourished for 1260 days. It looks to me like the world has about another 1260 days to go through. I expect to see Donald Trump re-elected as president in 2024, at which time he will mandate the horror that many have taken voluntarily, or else you will not be able to buy or sell. So what is going to be, how are you going to live? How is the woman going to live? She has to be provided for. Then going down to verse 13 of chapter 12 of Revelation, when the dragon saw that he had been thrown down to the earth, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the man-child. But the woman was given the two wings of the great eagle so that she might fly from the serpent into the wilderness to the place where she is to be nourished for a time and times and half a time. That's 1260 days. That's 42 months. That's three and a half years. The serpent poured water like a river out of his mouth after the woman to sweep her away with a flood. But the earth came to help, to the help of the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed the river that the dragon had poured from his mouth. Then the dragon became furious with the woman and went off to make war on the rest of her offspring, on those who keep the commandments of God and hold to the testimony of Jesus. It's time now for the woman to flee to the wilderness where the glorified sons of God will provide for the woman. We need to recognize where we are. We need to determine that we're not going back to Babylon, that we are going to live by faith. We recognize what is happening, but we understand that we can't change it. We're not going to change it by 
doing things in the political. We're not going to change it by feats of the flesh. We have to live in the Spirit, and we have to expect God to meet our needs, just as he met the needs of Israel when they came out of Egypt. Because we'll have the chance to go back to Egypt. And if we do, then we will partake of her sins and her plagues, and we will be cast into outer darkness. All of the scripture says that we must endure to the end. This is a walk of faith. It's a walk of understanding truth and desiring truth and righteousness with all your heart and with all your soul. Even to the death of your own physical body. But God will protect us. He will provide for us. He will make a way for us. But understand the time we live in. And act and make your plans accordingly. There is not going to be some great revival before this all occurs because it is occurring now. A revival only revives the flesh and keeps the status quo going for a little while. This age is over. We are now at the prophesied end of the age. Look up for your redemption draws nigh. Don't seek glory for yourself. Don't try to be something to be considered great. Don't try to become wealthy. Simply live day by day looking for Jesus and looking for what you are to do in this time. God will bring people to you for you to be with, for you to love, for you to help, and who will help you. Father, I pray that you will fill us with your Holy Spirit, that you fill us with faith in this evil and fearful time. More desperate that, than any time on the earth, as Jesus said. We need you to help us. We need you to fill us. We need you to protect us. We need you to provide for us. We are only flesh. And we can't do it in the flesh. We pray that you will fill us with your spirit. That you will glorify us. That you will fully make us into your image so that we can see you as you are, for we will be as you are.